Today I've got a problem from step three, which is Cambridge University's maths entrance exam. We've got three, oh, four parts, sorry, to this problem, and it's all to do with prime numbers and finding an upper bound on the number of primes less than n. So we've got four parts. Part one, by considering the binomial expansion of 1 plus x to the 2m plus 1, we want to prove that 2m plus 1 choose m is less than 2 times, uh, sorry, 2 to the power of 2m for any positive integer m. Here's where we get to the definition part. Uh, for positive integers r less than s, we define prs as the product of all prime numbers greater than r and less than or equal to s. So it's essentially the product of the primes uh, between r plus 1 and s inclusive. Um, and if there are no such primes in that interval, then we just define prs to be 1. So for example, p37 is 35 because between 3 and 7, so including 7, not including 3, the only primes are 5 and 7, and if you multiply them together, you get 35. P7, 10, there's no primes between 7 and 10. Uh, and 14, 18, the only prime is 17. So P14, 18 is 17. We want to show that for any positive integer m, Pm plus 1, 2m plus 1 divides 2m plus 1 choose m, and thus deduce that Pm plus 1, 2m plus 1 is less than 2 to the power of 2m. We want to show that if P1, comma k is less than 4 to the k for 2, 3, all the way up to 2m, then p1, 2m plus 1 is less than 4 to the power of 2m plus 1. And finally, we want to prove that p1n is less than 4 to the n for n at least 2. OK, this is a very interesting problem. We're going to start with part 1 up here. We want to prove that um, 2m plus 1 choose m is less than 2 to the m, 2 to the two power of 2m, sorry. And it tells us to consider the binomial expansion of this. Well, let's do that. That's just equal to 1 plus uh, 2m plus 1 times x, plus uh, 2m plus 1 choose 2 times x squared, and so on, all the way up to 2m plus 1, up to 2m, choose x to the 2m, plus x to the 2m plus 1. OK, great. Now, in particular, because these binomial co coefficients are symmetric and because 2m plus 1 is odd, I know that, like, for example, the 2m plus 1 here is actually the same as 2m plus 1 choose 2m. OK, now, how do I show that it's less than 2 to the 2m? Well, I can get 2 to the 2m plus 1 if I sub in x is 1. So let's do that. So 2 to the 2m plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 2m plus 1 plus 2m plus 1 choose 2 and blah, 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 up to these coefficients here, 2m plus 1 choose 2m plus 1. But now we notice because of the symmetry here, we've got pairs. So like 1 and 1, those pair up, 2m plus 1 and 2m plus 1 choose 2m. Those are the same number. So in fact, this right-hand side is 2 lots of 1 plus 2m plus 1 choose 1 plus 2m plus 1 choose 2, and so on up to the middle, 2m plus 1 choose m, like so. And if I cancel out a 2 on both sides, I get rid of this plus 1, and I get 2 to the 2m equals this. And so in particular, 2m plus 1 choose m must be less than 2 to the 2m. And that gives us our result for part 1. So for part 2 now, we want to prove that uh, pm plus 1, 2m plus 1 divides 2m plus 1 choose m. Now, why is this? Well, what is pm plus 1, 2m plus 1? That's just the product of the primes between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1. What's 2m plus 1 choose m? Well, if we just use the definition using factorials, this is 2m plus 1 factorial over m factorial times m plus 1 factorial. Now, if I kind of cancel down here, this is going to be equal to 2m plus 1 times 2m plus 2, oh, sorry, times 2m, sorry, times 2m minus 1, all the way down to m plus 2 all divided by m factorial. And now, on the top, we've got the product of a bunch of integers. And on the bottom, we've got the product of a bunch of integers. But in particular, this is an integer. We know that 2m plus 1 choose m is an integer. And all we've done is simplified it. So this guy here is definitely an integer. And obviously, there's going to be some cancellations on the top and bottom. But any prime that occurs between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1 will be one of these brackets here. But in particular, it can't get cancelled. So let's say that there's a, let's say, you know, 2m was 7, for example. Or oh, 2m wouldn't be 7. Let's say 2m minus 1 was 7, let's say. Well, then I know that m factorial will not contain a 7 because 7 is a prime number 
And 2n minus 1 is definitely bigger than m factor, uh, bigger than n. And in particular, it's bigger than any integer between 1 and n. So anything on the bottom, m, m minus 1, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1, there's not going to be a 7 on the bottom because 7 is a prime and between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1. And so it's at least, or strictly bigger than m plus 1, so it's not going to occur on the bottom at all. So it can't get cancelled out. So the numerator here must be a multiple of 7 and thus... 2m plus 1 choose m is a multiple of 7. And you can kind of repeat this for any prime between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1. So let's say 7 to 11 is somewhere, whatever. Then 11 times 7 will also be a factor of the numerator, and thus a factor of 2m plus 1 choose m. So if you multiply all the primes between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1, they don't get cancelled out, so they must still be there. And thus, therefore, the number is a multiple of the, the product of those primes. Cool. And so from this, we want to deduce that pm plus 1, 2m plus 1 is less than 2 times 2, uh, 2 to the power of 2m. Well, this is pretty clear. If pm plus 1, 2m plus 1 divides 2m plus 1 choose m, it must be smaller than or equal to this number. And this number here we know is less than 2 to, to the power of 2m. So therefore, we get the result. OK, let's move on to part three. We want to show that if P1K is less than 4 to the K, for K being 2 to 2M, then P of 1 comma 2M plus 1 is less than 4 times 2 to the M plus 1. This is kind of hinting at strong induction, which is then going to give us our, or going to help us get our conclusion in part four. OK, so we want to show that P1 comma 2M plus 1 is less than 4 to the power of 2M plus 1. This is a step problem, so we know we're probably going to want to use the previous part. So we probably want to use this somehow. OK, well, we're multiplying the primes between 1 and 2m plus 1. This is the product of the primes between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1. So why don't we just break it down? So the product of the primes between 1 and 2m plus 1 is the same as the product of the primes between 1 and m plus 1 times the product of the primes between m plus 1 and 2m plus 1. OK, great. And now this thing here, by our assumption, m plus 1 is going to be one of these values of k. We don't know, but one of them. Uh, and so that's going to be less than 4 to the power of m plus 1. And this thing here, from what we've just shown, is going to be less than 2 to the power of 2m, which is the same as 4 to the power of m. And if we combine those things, that's just 4 to the power of 2m plus 1. And that gives us the result for part 3. Let's look at the final part. So we've proved that P1, 2M plus 1 is less than 4 to the power of 2M plus 1. And now you might think, oh, well, can we just solve part 4 just basically by strong induction? But we've got to be careful here. Here we assume that this result was true from K equals 2 to 2M. But that is going up to 2M. What we need to also do is deal with the odd numbers as well. So here we've got 2M plus 1, but we want to show it's true for all N. Let's firstly deal with the base case. That's nice and easy. So p1 comma 2 uh, that's going to be the num the product of the primes between 1 and 2 inclusive there's only one there which is 2 and that is most certainly less than 4 squared uh, and let's also do uh, 3 as well for good measure this is going to be the product of the primes between 2 and 3 which is 2 times 3 which is 6 which is definitely less than 4 to the power of 3 okay great this is a good start now we want to we've shown that if uh, we've shown that basically p1 comma 2m plus 1 is less than 4 to the 2m plus 1, provided this is all true. So what we need to do is kind of extend part 3 a little bit and also show that then p1 comma 2m plus 2 is also less than 4 to the 2m plus 2. But this is pretty clear, right? Because if m is, well, m is an integer, right? So 2m plus 2 is going to be an even number bigger than 2, and so it's not going to be a prime number. So in fact, p1, 2m plus 2 is going to be the same as p1, 2m plus 1. And we know that that's less than 4 uh, to the power of 2m plus 1. And so in particular, it's less than 4 to the power of 2m plus 2. Great. So that kind of proves that if p1k is less than 4 to the k, for k equals 2, 3, all the way up to some number 2m, then it's also true for the next two numbers. So just to illustrate, let's say m equals, I don't know, 3 here. So we've checked k equals 2 up to 6. Then what we've just done is shown that if the, the, this inequality here is true from 2 to 6, it's also then true for 7 and 8 as well. And then you can go, well, if it's true for 2 to 8, then it's true for 9 and 10 as well. So it's a bit like induction, kind of strong induction here. And that's going to give us our result 
for part four. So just using strong induction and the fact that we know it's for, true for two and three, then we know it's true for four and five, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's how we would solve this problem. A really nice problem, and it kind of goes to show that the number of primes, which we normally denote pi of n, uh, is, a, is less than four to the n. And this is an upper bound that we can get. It's not a very strong upper bound, but it's pretty cool that we can get an upper bound without using too much advanced mathematics. If you look at the prime number theorem, for example, which gives you an asymptotic bound of pi n, that requires some somewhat more advanced number theory techniques. Whereas this basically just used, um, you know, the fact that 2m plus 1 choose m is an integer. A really nice problem, a really cool problem from step three. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.